Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer and this is Outer Wilds, a handcrafted solar system that gives you free reign to explore anywhere you'd like. But since there are five planets, a few moons, and a few space stations, it's pretty easy to miss out on some of the cool things the developers have put in the game. Since most people only play through it once, I figure I'll make this video to give everyone the chance to see how much love and care was put into the small details in the game. As always, this video will contain spoilers for Outer Wilds. To be honest, there are so many small details in Outer Wilds, I'm not even sure where to start. I guess we can start with the name, Outer Wilds. This is actually the in-universe name the Harthians came up with for their very own solar system. We find they used the name on the map located in our ship. We can also find a poster behind our spacesuit depicting how best to use our little scout. I think the eject button is probably well known throughout the community by now, but I'm not sure how many people know the ship actually has an altimeter. If you go into landing cam mode and look to the right of your screen, you see a tube with a small figurine of the ship inside. It also has a green liquid that will rise or fall according to the level of the surface below. This gives us an estimation of our position relative to the surface. Having this actually makes landing cam something that you can use, but it's something I see a lot of people have no idea about. One of the small details I missed during my first playthrough is actually kind of touching. Before we even leave Timber Hearth, we are able to play hide and seek with a couple of young Harthians. One of the kids, Tephra, tries to hide in the Harthian Museum, but they get kicked out and yelled at by Hornfells. After we find them, we can head up to get our launch codes from Hornfells, and on our way back down to the elevator to get on the ship, Tephra has left their friend to come wish us a farewell. They tell us that they are worried that we might die or get lost out in space just like Feldspar did. After all, we are not as good as an astronaut as Feldspar was, and everyone would be terribly sad if we were to get hurt or lost. Thankfully, we can reassure Tephra that everything is going to be fine. During my first playthrough, I didn't realize this was the same young Harthian that we played with, so it was touching to me to find that out. The Harthians have a few cool things scattered throughout their town as well. Getting on some of the roofs of the houses here, we can find the Harthians actually use solar panels to power their homes in a sustainable fashion. We can also find a bigger version of our little scout in orbit around Timber Hearth. Down on the surface, we can control a camera that's on board this satellite for something called Postcards from Orbit. It lets us stream a real-time image directly to a large screen that's in front of us. The Harthian children probably have a lot of fun playing with this thing, especially if they're also playing with a model ship at the same time. Staying on Timber Hearth, we can head over to the giant waterfall to find a cool little detail. Below the broken bridge, we can see a mural the Nomai had created depicting their arrival on Timber Hearth. A shuttle next to a waterfall and a few trees. But the interesting thing is, both of the Nomai have different colored suits on. The one on the left matches the color of suits we find on most of the Nomai in the game. But if you are observant, and you're willing to get really close to a Nomai who has been dead for 280,000 years, you can see the original Nomai who got stranded inside Dark Bramble had blue suits. When the Nomai got stranded on separate planets, they must have had to switch up the color of their suits for some reason. So the mural is depicting an original survivor of the Nomai, and one of the younger generations who may have been born in this system, arriving at Timber Hearth via Nomai Shuttle. Something easy to miss unless you're a geologist or a botanist is the naming scheme for characters in Outer Wilds. The Nomai are named after species of plants, while the Harthians are named after different types of rocks. As a bonus, I learned that my cat Solonum is actually named after a potato plant. Fun! Another interesting detail is while the Nomai have gender, the Harthians are a genderless species, not having male or female. One of the stranger details in the game is revealed by another Nomai mural. The mural depicts Nomai having discovered our genetic ancestors, a fish with four eyes just starting to grow limbs and emerge onto land. Observant players can actually still find this fish all over the place, but not where you may think. We don't find these fish in the streams of Timber Hearth. We find them in the tin cans and soup of the Outer Wild Venturers. The Harthians actually catch, cook, and eat their genetic ancestors which, to be honest, is a detail that I could have gone with missing. But, speaking of evolution and biological progression, 
everybody's favorite scaredy cat, Rebic, is a bit unique among the Harthians. Getting close to them and paying attention reveals that they actually have one more finger than the normal Harthians three. This is actually probably what allows them to slap on that banjo like a champ. A cool little feature of the Harthian village is they actually have a small cemetery behind one of the buildings. It's nice to see that they pay respects to those who pass, even though this is sort of an easter egg. This next object is actually an easter egg as well, but since it's so hard to find and so incredibly easy to miss, I think it's a good place to show the Fig's Backer satellite. A satellite put in the game for people who helped fund it through a crowdsourced website. They got to choose images or phrases, and we can even hear a Mickey Mouse-like voice say, Rah! Like a dirty shirt in the wash! Another cool thing sort of like that is the Nomai probe we see launch at the beginning of every loop. If we keep our eye on the probe, we can actually chase it down in our spaceship, and getting close to it, we see it's actually kind of bigger than our spaceship, and has some detail to it. Etched on its side is a symbol depicting the eye of the universe. The fact that the devs put detail into a probe that immediately flies out of the solar system is just amazing to me. Something else I find pretty cool is we can actually ram the volcanic rocks from Hollow's Lantern to cause them to break up before they hit the surface of Brittle Hollow. It'll likely damage your ship, but at least we can save the poor surface integrity of Brittle Hollow for a little while. One thing some people are surprised to learn is how Hollow's Lantern actually has something on it. The Nomai actually landed on it somehow, and inside of one of the volcanoes is the Nomai communications board, where the Nomai admit to using it as a volcano forge. This is where they tested the material for heat resistance to use as a protective shield around the Ash Twin Project's core. Another touching detail that is easily missed can be found after we locate Feldspar. Afterwards, we can tell Hornfells that we found Feldspar, but they decided not to immediately come home with us. Hornfells is ecstatic that we found them and that they're safe, but not at all surprised by them not coming home with us right away. Nonetheless, Hornfells is going to send Gossen to try to find them and bring them home. Although thinking about it, we may have just doomed Gossen to a fate inside Dark Bramble. Oh no. Maybe we should hope the sun explodes before they get there. Speaking of Dark Bramble, anglerfish aren't the only life form that we can find there. We can actually find centipedes floating around the interior. It makes sense that these little things could live and thrive off of Dark Bramble's vines. Plus, I think it's cool that there's a bit more life in the solar system. But, they're a bit tough to find when you're on a computer. I hear on consoles they're all over the place though. As a Bramble bonus, the anglerfish have, like, spikes that stick out as they chase you. And I'd be willing to bet that most people don't turn around and look at anglerfish while they chase you, so not many people probably know about that. This next detail was actually added in an update to the game. Below Church Camp lay an entrance to a cave system in which we can find multiple chambers full of fossilized ancient sea life. When the water dried up here, it left us with a deposit of well-preserved fossils from various species, and some of these things are pretty freaking big. One example you could sort of assume, but people don't usually bother to check, is each Nomai statue we find throughout the game actually has a corresponding mask inside the Ash Twin projects. Each Nomai would be connected to a statue, and each statue is connected to a mask. Apparently, we're lucky our statue's mask isn't the one lying broken on the floor. At the Nomai construction yard, we can find that the circular grav floors used to make the orbital probe cannon have an active gravity wells that would allow the Nomai to move parts with ease and precision. They probably use these to get access to hard areas as well, allowing them to perform any work they needed to wherever they needed. The Nomai really made good use of these gravity crystals. We can actually find the birthplace of their discovery and the later workshop constructed to study and create the gravity crystals. On one of the shelves of Brittle Hollow, we find a few broken gravity crystals. This might be where the Nomai discovered the inherent effects of Brittle Hollow's crust and started experimenting to try to utilize the effect. As soon as they found out they could actually make something useful in the form of gravity crystals, they made an entire workshop to produce them. One cute little detail that is often overlooked is a young Nomai's poem in the temporary city on Brittle Hollow. A young Nomai named Ilix has gotten the artistic bug and has put together something about the black hole. Look out, look out below, look out for the gravity hole, for should you slip and lose your grip, then into space you'll go. 
As a bonus, if we look closely at this young Harthian's writing compared to an adult's writing, you can see that the adult Nomai's writing is neat and compact, while the children's writing is all wiggly and overall more messy. The adult Nomai seem to use their staff to write, but I'm guessing the young Nomai had to write by hand to learn the language, and this is why it's all messy. One of the details I find the coolest is how the Nomai projection pole actually uses a liquid below you to project your image to the corresponding pole. This allowed the two Nomai at separate locations to have conversations effectively face to face. And I must say, we look excellent as a golden statue. We should get a tiny version made up for the ship. I didn't realize this until I beat the game several times over, but when I did it blew my freaking mind. A detail I didn't notice until a kind viewer pointed it out to me is a couple of the symbols the Nomai use. The symbol for the Eye of the Universe has a hollow center depicting its eye shape, but if you take the symbol the Nomai use for the Quantum Moon and plug it into this empty spot, it actually fills in the void and they merge to become one symbol. It's pretty cool that the Nomai use these symbols to show us that the Quantum Moon came from the eye. One of the details I find most interesting about the Nomai and the symbols they left behind is one I can't particularly explain. For some reason, the Nomai encircled each of the white hole teleportation pads with a series of stones. We find this pattern on every planet, with them even freezing them in place on Brittle Hollow's inverted warp pad. On Earth, I think things like this are meant to be a sign to future generations that this location may be important. But really, I have no idea why the Nomai would have done this. In any case, it's interesting as hell, because they had to have a reason to do it, and I'd like to know that reason. As a bonus for the teleportation pads, you can actually use your scout to trigger them and test the waters. We also happen to get a great view of the teleportation in action when we do this. The last few details I have are sort of related to gameplay. Throughout the game, our player character dies repeatedly, and in a variety of wacky ways. Depending on what hijinks we got into last loop, our character will wake up with a different reaction. When we suffocate, our character wakes up gasping for air. <coughs> if we meditate, we wake up sort of relaxed as if it were all just a dream. One thing I find really cool is they actually made the marshmallow roasting mechanic relatively useful to the player. If we get hurt while out exploring somewhere and our ship is too far away, all we need to do is find a campfire and pull out our can of marshmallows. Roasting up one of these bad boys to perfection will refill your health bar to full. I honestly didn't notice this until someone told me, but it's a nice little detail. As a bonus for the marshmallows, the supernova will actually catch the whole thing on fire. One of the last details that people may have missed during their playthrough is at the eye of the universe. If we teleport there and just watch the sky from the vessel surrounding the eye, we can watch as all the stars slowly begin to fade out. We can watch until the outer wild system star explodes, and then the remaining lingering stars begin to blink out one by one, until eventually they are all gone. Now, it's not the happiest detail in the world, but it's something cool they added to depict the universe, and it's something easily missable in the excitement of making it to the eye. As a bonus fact, just so we don't end on a sad note, Rutal, the adorable old Harthian rocking back and forth in the rocking chair, is actually the mayor of our little crater. The mayor likes to sit next to the Museum of the Outer Wild Ventures. I bet this is because they are so proud of their species' achievements that this is where they want to be, which I find adorable. But that's about all the small details I can think of right now. The sad thing about it is I'm sure there are probably so many more details that slip right past me in my 170 odd hours of playing the game. I'd like to thank the subscriber Blapature for creating an amazing list of details in the community post when I asked the community for details. I found it very helpful and even learned a few things reading it so I really appreciate it. Hopefully, watching the video you were able to learn something and see some things that maybe slipped past you during your playthrough. And if you enjoyed the video, consider crashing your spaceship into the thumbs up button or subscribing to the channel and joining the Explorer fleet. It lets YouTube know my content is worth showing to more people and really does help support the channel. If you want to help support the channel more directly, you can applaud the video or become a member by clicking the join button below. Becoming a member gets you some perks here on the channel as well as the Lore Explorer Discord. And of course, a special thank you to the members here on the channel. I really do appreciate the support. As always, this is a lore explorer diving deep into the game so you don't have to. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.